Good evening and welcome to another episode of On The Sofa. My name is Susan and tonight Monia and I are here celebrating St Patrick's Day with you, so thanks for joining us. We've got a great episode lined up tonight as we'll be chatting with Ronan Doherty from Idias Gill. Idias Gill is an Irish language cultural centre based in Donegal. So it's founded in 1984 um, and one of its key aims is to bring together people of all cultural and political backgrounds through the medium of Irish. So we couldn't think of a better way um, to mark today than by learning more from Ronan about the Irish culture, language and also delve into some of the traditions surrounding St Patrick's Day. Mm -hmm. But first we thought you'd take, we'd take a bit of time to look fondly at some of the Scottish and Irish links. So if you travel around Ireland and Scotland, you'll know a simil notice a similarity in some of the place names. Places like Kilmarnock, Balakulish, Drummore and Carrickfergus might come from either country. And this is because there is a shared route between the native languages of Ireland, which is Irish, and the Scottish Highlands, which is Scots Gaelic. Both are part of the Gaelic family of languages, but uh, which come from the Celts who settled in both Ireland and Scotland. Although the languages diverged from each other, there are enough similarities that a speaker of one might have a good guess at the other. So it's worth worth learning one. You can maybe yeah, go to both countries. So. If you only learn one word, we suggest it should be slancha, which is the same in both languages. It's the equivalent of cheers, um, pronounced slancha, and meaning to your health. Quite a good one, especially for Paddy's Day. Oh, definitely. Definitely for De toasting your whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> and talking of whiskey, moving on, whatever way you spill it, the juice of the bar barley has a long tradition in both Ireland and Scotland. Whiskey with an E was probably first distilled by Irish monks. Um, there are records from the 15th century uh, for the drink known as the water of life. Uh, Old Bushmills in County Antrim was granted the first ever distillery licence in 1608, um, which is quite a long time ago, mm -hmm. um, although many an unlicensed still was producing for a long time after that. Um, today, Irish whisky brands such as Jameson and Tullamore Dew are known worldwide. The oldest mention of Scotch whisky, with, uh, so that's without an E, mm -hmm. is from 1495 when King James IV gave an order to Linders Abbey for, oh gosh, 1500 bottles of the stuff. That's a <laughs> quite that's keen. A, yeah, thirst, <laughs> thirsty man there. Uh, distillation, both legal and illegal, continued to grow in the following centuries. Um, and today, Scotland boasts over 80 distilleries. Uh, eight of them are on the tiny island of Isla. Quite a good place to be then. Yeah, uh, if you like whiskey, certainly. Yeah. So Scotch, so Scottish whiskey is typically typically distilled twice and uses peat smoked barley, while Irish whiskey is normally distilled three times and uses kiln dried barley. So this gives Scotch a smokier taste and Irish whiskey a smoother taste. So which is better? That's personal preference and um, obviously we're a bit biased towards their Scottish whiskey but go and try both and yeah. be the judge yourself. So now something that some of you may already know is that along with our Scottish tartans we also weave and stock Irish ones. These differ slightly to our Scottish ones in that they are based on whichever county your family is from. So my surname actually has a link to both Scotland and Ireland so I can wear the County Arma Tartan as well as my Scottish version. That's quite good. So you could quite wear both. lucky, yeah. Could you wear both at the same time? Oh, I can, yeah. Could, yeah. yeah. Do a bit of mix and matching. So all of our Irish tartans can be viewed on our website and we'll post a link in the comments below for you to see those. There we go. So without further ado, let's start the chat with Ronan. Okay. I hope you enjoy the interview. He's got a lot of interesting things to tell yeah. us. Ronan, thanks Hello. for um, joining us and coming to chat to us um, for our St. Patrick's Day on the sofa. I'm um, delighted to, thanks. But I thought before we sort of get onto that subject, it would be good to hear a bit more about Idias Gale and what your role is there as well. Sure thing. Well, well, Idias Gale, we, are, uh, we provide uh, language courses and cultural activity holidays for people. In, in normal times, what happens <laughs> is that people come here on their holidays and the majority of people come to learn 
Irish, Gaelic, what we call the Irish language. And um, it's very informal. Part of the point is that it's very much outside of the formal education system. So people are people are here on their holidays, and as I say, and they're learning Irish. But as well as that, people come here to do hill walking, to do, um, to, they do tapestry weaving, they do uh, photography, painting, all kinds of different things as well. And they do that through a large part through Irish as well. And it's another, another way of learning the language. Of course, for the past year, it's been a little bit different. We haven't had so many people and uh, everything's gone online, but we've had a bit of fun with that too. And it's sort of made it easier for certain people to, yeah. to keep in touch with us. So that's that's been nice as well. So you've been doing quite a bit of online, like online courses as well then? An, an awful lot, yeah. We've had, it's actually, it's almost a year ago, Easter um, 2020, we did our sort of first full week of online courses. And I think we've we've had about 800 people since then. And uh, before, ever before this, the, I think one of the most interesting things for people that came and visited, uh, visited us here was that um, you'd come here and about 60% of the people would be would be Irish or they come from the island of Ireland. Mm -hmm. But then probably about 40%, almost half of the people come from all over. So we have plenty of people from Scotland, but yeah. we have from England, from the US, Japan, Russia, everywhere. And that was always the case when the courses were physically taking place here, but it's that yeah, wee bit easier for those people to kind of connect in now as well. So that's, that's been nice. Yeah, I mean, that's the, although, um, you know, um, it's unfortunate that we can't, travel i mean you know things like this make it like the, the hardest thing is something when, when when technology doesn't work <laughs> but it, like you say it makes it just for accessibility if perhaps someone wasn't able to travel and um, that yeah then they're able to, to learn yeah from home which is great really Absolutely. And, and it's been amazing what you can do online because we've had a lot of things that started out as sort of crazy ideas and then and then uh then you end up doing them and you're asking what my job is that's basically i mean i go i do everything from taking out the bins to creating grant applications but <laughs> but, uh, but um but a lot of that uh, what i've been doing the past year is that we've been going well we normally do an archaeology course can we do an archaeology course online and, and amazingly you actually can and uh it's partly pre-recorded and then partly live and all of that and it's it's uh yeah it's, it's it's been great fun i have to say and when all this is over because at the end of the day um part of what we do here as well as as well as sort of offering a kind of service to people who come and visit we, we want to kind of add a little bit to the life of this is a Gaeltuk region where we are we're in glam column killa in southwest Donegal in the northwest of ireland and uh, you, you know, when people are here, they're staying in the B and Bs. They're going to the pubs. They're eating food. You know, there's a you know there's a there's an economic value too, which obviously isn't happening at the minute. Yeah, and yeah. so, you know, ideally, you, we hope we'll eventually be able to return to that too. But but the online piece will always be there, and I think it'll add greatly to it. So uh, so that's you know that's the positive take on things, yeah. and uh, you have to have to look at the bright side. Well, exactly. <laughs> Stay positive. Um, yeah, well, that's really good. That's brilliant. Yeah. And then, so you've obviously you've talked about um, language courses, <clears throat> and then and also ones for like complete complete beginners. So, like, I mean, I, I suppose maybe for you, you I was going to say, in your opinion, you might think it's very easy. Like, is the Irish language is it is it difficult or is it quite is it a relatively easy? Yeah, no, it's a it's a reasonable question, but I suppose like. The way I always look at it is no no language is kind of objectively easier or harder than another, but it depends where you're coming from. So if you're a, if you're a native English speaker and you haven't learned any other languages before, Irish, I would say, is probably a little bit harder than, say, French or Spanish, which might be a little bit closer to what you're familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, there's some things. So, so for example, in English, you know, when you when you make a sentence, you you sort of say, "I went to the shop." So you you put your you first, and then the verb, and then whatever you did comes after. Whereas in Irish, the verb comes first. We sort of say, "Went I to the shop?" You know, so okay. we make it up it. So there be things like that 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 are a little bit different. Um, but then it's it's easier than a lot of other languages too. Pro probably the biggest challenge that comes along with learning Irish, and I'm sure we'll talk, we'll mention uh, Scots, Gaelic, Gaelic a wee bit in, in the context as well. I'm yeah. sure it's a little bit the same too, is that if you're, say, trying to learn it outside of a, I mentioned this is a Gaeltacht region, and the idea of a Gaeltacht region is it's an area where 
Irish is still kind of widely spoken in the community. Yeah. But if you're trying to learn Irish outside of a region like that, there's, you know, there's, there's an added difficulty because you just have less opportunities to practice. So yeah. that, we try to cater to that. But I mean, as well, even, even before COVID, uh, what's available online and in terms of Irish language radio and TV stations and media and all that like help, has helped people massively. In the last 20 years, it's gotten an awful lot easier to learn to learn a language like Irish. Yeah. And yeah, you just mentioned there, maybe we can touch upon sort of Gaelic and Gaelic. So, because I know there are probably a lot of people that sort of don't, or think maybe they're the same, don't know there's a difference. Can you? Yeah, they, well, so the funny thing, a, a, a funny way to think about it, right, is if, uh, if you took two kind of famous historical figures, right? So one here in, in Ireland, Brian Beru, I don't know if you ever heard of him before, but he's sort of credited with uh, defeating the Vikings when they were invading Irish. And then if you take Macbeth, right? To take a uh, much, probably uh, famous from the play, but uh, I think probably uh, a much nicer guy that he was made out to be. But, um, but uh, so they lived about the same time, you know, in the 11th century. And if they ever met, I don't think they did, but if they ever met, they would have been speaking the same language. They would have, they would have, um, you know, they would have understood each other perfectly and they lived in a world where that was, you know, that was the language and, uh, you know, they had lots of contacts with other places, but they might have, they might have written to them in Latin and things like that. So at one stage, it was very much the same language. And there is a, there was always a sort of school of thought that Gaelic came to Scotland from, from Ireland. I don't know. There's been a bit of debate about that since, but, but they're very much connected. But then over the last sort of 500, 600, a little bit longer. They've just sort of diverged a wee bit. So like in practical terms, um, if I met a speaker of Gaelic uh -huh. and they, we were speaking, I'd be pretty well able to follow along what they're saying. And, and usually they would be able to follow me, but we wouldn't be speaking the same language, if you know what I mean. They're, it's just okay. a little bit, a little bit too far. They're a little bit more different from each other than say two dialects of the language, but but very much connected and a lot of the same words. So I'm a, it's I, I, I'm not a Gaelic speaker, so I'm reluctant to to, 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 to butcher anything. But but just to take one example, like I, I think if you're meeting meeting someone and saying hello in Gaelic, it's something like Kimarahahu or something along those lines whereas we for us it's kujé martatu and it's it's very much the same thing but you know just just slightly different so yeah. uh, and uh up here in donegal in the northern part of ireland as well what the irish we speak what we call ulster irish is very close is much closer to gaelic than it would be for obvious reasons than it would be for say someone from munster who speaks yeah. irish so, so an awful lot of connections there okay well, that's 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 because I think yeah I don't I'd imagine some like some people like we just might even have assumed that it's the same yeah it means it's the same thing so it's good yeah elaborated so thank you hmm. and then I was I was having a look on your website um, and I was looking at the sort of the section for like reviews and feedback and things and I noticed that quite a lot of people had mentioned um, like the use of the word folklore in the in the area where you're based. Um, so I just wonder if you could tell us a bit more about that. If there's something something specific, or um, it's probably loads of things. I mean, we're we're lucky to be in an area that it, it's 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 very rich in terms of folklore. But kind of folklore comes in all sort of shapes and forms. So you have um, you've even everything from the place names. I mean, the place names itself they are very descriptive. So there's you know there were there were. It, going by the place names you'd know that there were eagles here once though there weren't now there's a lot of place names that mention say eagles and things like that mm -hmm. gives you sort of clue to what was there in the place and then there was a huge storytelling tradition in the area and there still is there are still a, a few storytellers in the area uh -huh. and, and the kind of stories they would have told would have would have ranged from the very sort of classical kind of mythological kind of stories things to do with the fianna and uh and uh, yeah, Finn McCool and Cuchulain and all of that. And there would have been an awful lot of stories. And these would have been long stories that people would have memorized. And, you know, in the winter time, they would have told in people's houses. We have this word Arniel, which is, you know, sort of going around in the winter, having, you know, having a bit of crack in people's houses, telling stories, passing the time. And that would have been a massive thing. I mean, right up until right up until the 40s and 50s, you know, of the last century, that would have just been, you know, a regular way of life. And of course, television, everything changed that a wee bit, but it's still, still carried on. And still, I say, few people in the area who, are, who, who have quite a lot of stories. And, uh, and uh, as well as that, there's other, there's other ways folklore comes into it. Um, I mentioned this place is called Glan Colum Killa. An awful lot of the folklore is to do with Colum Killa, who is a, who is a saint who share, we share a kind of connection with Scotland there because obviously he went to Iona, but but um, 
he there's a lot of folklore in the area to do with him and there's a pilgrimage that's done every year on the 9th of june what we call the tourists would be a journey or, or a journey or a pilgrimage and people like it's been done for hundreds of years it's still done every year on the 9th of june mm -hmm. and it's a sort of there's sort of 15 stations or stops along the way okay. and uh, people they're they're all these some of them are these gorgeous ornate kind of standing stones and there's all sort of traditions associated with the tourists too and what people did so yeah there's a there's a, there's a lot of different aspects to it so uh, oh, yeah it's so yeah i think you, you mentioned earlier but it sounds like um, in terms of learning it would be a fun a fun place to learn if that makes sense because it just sounds like there's quite a, you know sort of a lot sort of to sort of stimulate the senses going on which is nice at, it, it is yeah it is really you know and that's that's certainly what we think and that's that's what a lot of people say when they come and visit i mean there's it's it's got a lot going for it in the sense of the, the where it's scenery wise it's a very beautiful area and people are interested in different things i mean this would be a huge area for traditional music particularly fiddle music as well mm -hmm. and so people who come that's actually a lot of the way that people sort of discover the area first is often through yeah. music and uh, so that'd be a big part but then there's some people not all irish speakers are into traditional music either and people have other interests so so just as you say you can kind of uh you know people come for all sorts of reasons and some people are interested in the archaeology some people are interested in the folklore some people like the hill walking and the outdoor activities and uh, yeah it's all very practical and as you say we kind of keep it as far away from a sort of a school experience as possible as if people are yeah. here to enjoy themselves and have a bit of fun too yeah. so uh, that's yeah, important it makes learning easier as well like you say, it's less sort of rigid and like, yeah. It does indeed. And people are, and of course, these are adults, you know, what we, the courses we do are for adults. And so, you know, they're adults, they're not kids. And yeah, it's a different, it's a different way. And it does, but we, we very much think that um, you have to enjoy it. I mean, you're not going to keep doing something that you're not, that you don't enjoy. And so, yeah, yeah, you have to have a bit of crack with it as well. Okay. <clears throat> and we had a chat before, the, uh, before we met today to do to do our interview, and um, you had told me that there's a sort of fairly strong tradition of weaving and wool spinning, um, which is obviously of interest to us, given that we make a lot of wool tartan. Um, <laughs> and is that quite a, is that quite a long standing like an old sort of old tradition? Yeah, I think in one way or another, I was studying this. So I have a, the only reason I, I'm not trying to look intelligent here with my book. But I was studying, there's, a very, there's a very good book here on weaving tapestry in, in, in rural rural Ireland. I can give you the details about it again. So I was studying. So it make, they make the point that sheep came here about six thousand years ago. So they were going. The people have probably been doing an awful lot with wool for a very long for a very long time. But there would have been there would have been like uh, like spinning and weaving would have been a very big industry in in this area. Well, I, I don't know if industry is the right word but a lot of people would have done the work and uh, I mean some of it would have just been to reduce clothes for themselves it's I'm sure it's the same in Scotland these kind of areas people here uh, traditionally you know it's farmers and fishermen and people were very kind of self-sufficient and for a long time this area would have been very isolated from other parts of the country so people sort of people made their own clothes and did it all that but, but maybe in the last sort of 200 years or so I mean it did sort of become an industry as well it was how it was part of how people made their 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 um their living and uh, uh, that's uh, that's it's changed a wee bit in in say in recent times in the sense that there are there's a couple of there's a couple of um excellent businesses around here rosson and donegal yarns and studio donegal and uh, i'm afraid of leaving anybody out there but uh, there's a there's a <laughs> um, fisherman out of ireland and a few more but they, but um yeah and so they they very much now are making clothes for people who are much like yourselves, it, you know, for people who are interested in a sort of a fashion, less for practical reasons and more for fashion reasons. And there's a tourism aspect to it as well, but it's continued. But the other the other thing worth mentioning that might be a little bit unusual is, uh, and that's what, what this book's about, but about 20 years ago, there started a project to do tapestry weaving okay. with, with wool and with the kind of traditional dyeing methods. So there was a big tradition of natural dyes, you know, of kind mm -hmm. of a lichens and seaweeds and things like that, and using that to dye clothes. And they used them to make these sort of very artistic 
tapestries, yeah. you know, and they've they were exhibited all over the world, and there's a good few of them sitting in embassies in different countries now. So it was a very it was a project called Tapish Gale, and it's uh, yeah. So there's a lot of it's 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 amazing, like what uh, I I was I was joking with you with you for the program now. Don't ask me too much about uh, tartans because I'm not going to make any claims about being a, a, a knitter myself. But uh, <laughs> but um, I, I just, it's like, I say the kind of the artistry of it and uh, and uh, what what people can create and it's all natural material and very sort of sustainable and everything you know it's 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 brilliant really yeah and especially well, look the tapestry that you're talking about especially if that's hand dyed as well i mean that will be a very lengthy process to get it to the finished to the finished piece as well so uh, absolutely and yeah they were what they were doing was a lot of work on commission because it's not something you would be sort of commercially producing at, at, at scale sort of and, and yeah it was it was they were and some of them are huge you know they made a lot of small ones but some of them would be you know the the size of the size of your wall you know so it was uh yeah it's very it's 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 uh it's amazing but uh it's it's uh, as i say just like yourselves it's very it's a very um it's a great use of the natural resources you know that that are in a, in a place and people's skills and these skills that people had and it means you're not losing them yeah that's important and and like you say i guess i think particularly something like 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 well wool like tartan is that it's it does it it is kind of timeless as well you know i guess that's why i like uh, you know a lot of people like what we do is that yeah that when you sort of buy something that is it can, it can last a lifetime essentially so yeah. absolutely yeah and that was yeah and that was people people made clothes to last they weren't they weren't throwing them away and buying them again and you know that that stands i'd say even if people aren't doing it for such practical reasons now that's the that's the tradition that's there and yeah it's, it's brilliant to, the quality kind of carries through yeah. yeah we'll get once we've finished I'll, I'll get the name of the of the book from you we can put it into our um uh, we can put it into our facebook comments so if anyone wants to sort of look it up then they can Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Okay. So we should probably, yeah, we should probably now move on to St. Patrick's Day, shouldn't uh, we? <laughs> We've not gone there yet. We're there now. Going on, is there? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, I guess it's wrong to assume because probably yeah, not all of our viewers will probably know why exactly we celebrate it. Um, so are you able to? Is that something you can can help us? Yeah, with? yeah. Well, I, can, I, I, sh I really should be able to say something. Yeah, to but no, I do. And a lot of people, it is one of those things you grow up with in a lot of places. Even if you're yeah. not Irish, like the parades happen and this goes on, and people kind of take it for granted. But I suppose why do people celebrate St Patrick? So well, St Patrick is. Um, the, the patron saint of Ireland so he was and of course every I mean you have you have St Andrew and St George every, most countries have have a patron saint but um but I suppose I guess the big factor here was the emigration that happened from Ireland and the way Irish create you know we've there's there's millions and millions in the Irish diaspora and they went all over the the world and I suppose they took St Patrick's Day with them as a sort of a you know it's a day that kind of celebrate your your national identity and all of that and and so from that you have this sort of tradition of making a of making a, a celebration out of the day but maybe we can we can say more about that but a, an interesting fact about saint patrick himself that uh, that sometimes people outside of ireland don't realize of course number one he's he, he's not actually irish or he wasn't born in ireland he's uh he's, he's a britain for sure for sure there's a bit of debate about where if you if you ask um if you ask most irish people they would tell you he was born in wales i don't think they really know um, but, but the one thing that was for sure is that he came from a, you know, he was from a, it would have been a, a Roman family. A, Christianity, of course, came to Britain with, with the Romans. And uh, so he, you know, re reputedly was um, taken as a slave to Ireland um, at, at some point, maybe when he was a teenager. And he spent six years in County Antrim and Schlieve Mish uh, just working escaped went back to went back to britain and uh and uh, sort of later found a calling and uh went, oh, studied to be a priest and came back and is reputed to have co converted um ireland to to christianity so that's that's how he gets uh, how he, he gets that particular um position but of course there's all sort of stories and tales and traditions associated with paid saint patrick and with saint patrick's day um some of them some of them more or less uh, religious <laughs> depending but um and uh, and it's yeah it's just it, it's it's just a huge day of celebration for Irish people. Yeah, and and like so, how like how is it celebrated? Like what in Ireland? What's like so? What happens? Yeah, the, I suppose the main feature that you'll get 
um, that people think of and think about. They think of the parades. So there's always a parade, and in, in Dublin every year you'll get a you'll get a a large national parade. But the thing maybe people forget about sometimes is that every town in Ireland will have some kind of so so Cashel here in Glencoe Kill. We, there'll be a local parade. In the next parish there'll be another parade. So it's a it's a sort of a it be it's a community event. You know, different businesses, different organisations in the area they'll throw something together. You know, it's usually there's often a lot of humour in it. You know, there'll be there'll be sort of you know there'll be something making fun of something, or it'll be St Patrick and yeah. Snake and and uh, and things like that so and that's that's probably the main feature and obviously then there's you know there's 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 the religious side of it and also there's a there's been a there's been a little bit of an association between st patrick's day and people having a good time in the pubs as well and mm -hmm. uh, so these are all different different parts of it and uh, so actually yeah. you know the st patrick's day that you have in different places around the world is um is not is not too different from what we get up to in ireland but yeah. uh I no, go on. Yeah. There'll be no, there'll be no pubs this year, though, will there? No, and and not really any parades either. Oh, it's yeah. going to be one. Of, it's going to be one of these, uh, another one of these online things. There is, there's a, there's, there's a, there's sort of a few days of celebration planned now, primarily online. It is still obviously it's the it's a national holiday in Ireland, so yeah. it'll be it'll be people will have a nice day of work on uh, uh, all day on Wednesday. So that's so the, it is going to you know a bit a bit of time and I suppose a bit of family time and a, and a day off. So people will still enjoy it, but it, it will be it will be a little bit different. A bit different. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Have you got anything planned? So there's actually a few. Uh, well, I suppose two things. It just scale. We we have we have classes, and uh, we, we we have classes most days of the week, and we're we're continuing on. There's actually a singing class on Wednesday night. We we sort of thought what we might do, and as uh, seeing as people are um, sort of stuck at home to a large extent, uh, we sort of felt we we continue ahead. And there are some local events in this. In the so I mentioned there isn't a parade. Um, so there, but there are there's there is a concert that's being streamed online and all of that kind of thing. So we'll 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 and we'll um we'll pub publicize that a bit on, on our page as well. So and we for that reason we decided our our current sort of term is coming to an end in two weeks time. So we, we might have a concert ourselves, but we decided we'd we'd leave that um till we get to the end of those. But yeah, it's it's as I say, it will we will probably be looking at a screen for a large part of the day, which which unfortunately just seems like normal life now. But uh. But, yeah, uh, but still, it'll be it'll be something a bit different. Oh yeah, well that's the thing. I suppose it's yeah, it's although it's like you say, it's sort of it's becoming it's becoming the norm is any kind of sort of virtual gathering. Um, like you say, I think maybe when it's for something slightly different because we did actually for um for Burns Night we um had put together kits that you, that you could purchase. So it was yeah, if you were yeah, you couldn't have people around at your house, but it still it makes it a bit more you know it's a bit more of an event. It makes it a bit more of a special. Thing to do um, which is quite nice absolutely and you do it's good to have things that sort of mark out certain days yeah. from, so it doesn't all blend into one yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> so you used to get dressed up for some for some reason yeah <laughs> right. and then yeah because you were talking about sort of like myths and stories and things and um, that there sort of circulates St Patrick and St Patrick's Day and even just from doing like a quick um Sort of Google search, some interesting ones came up. So I thought I must ask you like, either your thoughts on them or if you've heard any sort of really strange ones. The one that I that I had read um, was that St Patrick is said to have banished all snakes from Ireland. That's yeah. Well, cool. that's not a strange one. That's if you ask if you ask you know uh, kids in Ireland, you know what did St Patrick's do? That's number one. That's the first okay. thing they'll come back and tell you that he banished. <laughs> so yes, he is reputed to have done that now. I think if you check it out, they, they're fairly sure that there haven't been snakes here for thousands of years. So <laughs> whether we can whether we can create credit St. Patrick with it, I don't know. But that's that's definitely one of the things he's uh, he's reputed to have done. <laughs> right. But there's a there's a whole um there's a whole load of traditions associated with St. Patrick. Like the uh, one of the more interesting ones I think is um there is a set of stories. Uh, so the, in, in kind of Irish mythology, there, there's a thing called the, a group called the Fianna, which there's, a, there's just a whole lot of legends associated with them. But they, they very much um, went with sort of pagan Ireland and the time before kind of Christianity. But there's a brilliant series of stories. Um, they call it Aglub Nishanorik, but it's, it's the idea is that one of the Fianna was sort of still alive when 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 Pandrick was was uh, was was going about the country, and so he sort of um, travels around with him as he's doing his uh, as as he's doing his rounds of the country, and they have this sort of dialogue, you know, and sort of 
Patrick sort of telling him what why you know you know the Christian life is better and and Oshin who is the who is the person that's come here is sort of talking back to the days of the Fina and the warriors and and uh, how you know it was brilliant and he, he sort of but, you know, he sort of makes the the Fina sort of sound like the Rolling Stones, and you know, <laughs> the, you know, yeah. the brilliant times they got up to, and and uh, and then Patrick has his response. But you know, those kind of stories are are, are brilliant. And then um, we mentioned where the pub sort of comes into it, and the sort of uh, you know that people sort of um, get up to all sort of madness on on St Patrick's Day. But some people credit Patrick with that too. I'm not I'm not sure I'm not yeah. sure is that. But there's there's another story that um, Patrick. Uh, Visited a visited a whatever the equivalent of a public house was at that time, uh -huh. where the owner was um, sort of famed for not being the most uh, flyhul, as we'd say, the most generous uh, okay. with his measures and things like that. So um, uh, the story goes, if I tell right, that he, that Patrick told him that in somewhere in his basement or building or whatever that there was a that there was a there was a demon and the demon grew. Uh, with the, the smaller the measures he gave him the drinks oh, um, okay. so so when he came back you know a month or a year later or whatever he found that uh, that this person was you know being serving large generous measures of everything and uh, and he had this tradition then of the pot of Fadrig of you know of a, of a generous glass of whiskey on on St Patrick's Day so uh, so whether it's true or not it gave people a bit of license to, yeah. to enjoy a clever one to be honest <laughs> yeah. Well, if you get away with that now, try uh, to try that, but maybe yeah. Exactly, exactly. I don't know whether any other legends you came across there now that. Uh, um, yeah. I think that was I that I couldn't I couldn't find any other ones, but um, yeah, because I just I suppose you're saying that's just sort of that's a common one, but I suppose for someone that doesn't know as much, I thought. That seems a bit odd, but oh, absolutely, yeah, and it's a good, it's a good one. Of course, the other, the other funny one. So you, where I'm talking to you from here in, in Glan Columkilla, the, the the other funny fact about all is this is one of the parts of Ireland that it's claimed Patrick never visited, ah, uh, okay. that he stayed away from, <laughs> which which uh, is down to a later legend to do with. I'm not sure if you, if you, you I'm sure you have heard of Columkill before in Columkilla. So the, he was a slightly later Saint Patrick's meant to have come to Ireland. Ireland in 432 mm -hmm. and uh, Colm it's actually his 1500th birthday this year he was born in 520 and there's actually a few kind of events going on this year to commemorate that but uh, but um, he is reputed to have Patrick's reputed to have come to this part of Ireland and found it to be filled with sort of uh, demons and bad spirits and basically yeah. said no, not my problem. <laughs> and uh, and, yeah, and said that someone else would come along later who would sort of be able to do the job. So I think there's okay. a bit of a the Baptist kind of thing in there. But but that was Colin Kill, and obviously Colin Kill's supporters. Is, so he should have come to this area, cle cleared it of, of all of, it, of all such you know evils, yeah. and uh, and established you know a, a you know a, 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 so a nice new. Um, peaceful place here but of course I actually find all that history very interesting because I think saints in sort of early modern or not yeah early Ireland and Scotland mm -hmm. uh, it was almost like supporting a football team you know you had people places had their saints so they had Saint Colin yeah. Kill here and of course so they were you know they were the ones you put forward and they were able to do the things that the other ones were so it was sort of like support you know Celtic yeah. or Rangers or Man United <laughs> yeah. Quite and, uh, to, yeah it's quite a good way to sort of think about it actually yeah <laughs> um but uh so so yeah so as i say so patrick this is a place where patrick almost definitely didn't come but uh come. But, oh. but um but then colin kill as as say he was born in another part of donegal mm -hmm. and um but later in his life he was he, he was exiled he sort of self-exiled himself okay. to iona um, of Scotland and from there so a lot of um, when people talk the book of Kells is a very famous piece of artwork but there's a very large thinking that that was actually made in Iona and would have been brought back with Columban okay. monks then so uh, so yeah there's all these sort of connections that's brilliant yeah Ronan yeah. thank you thank you so much it's been honestly it's been very very informative um, and very fun as well 
Oh, good. Well, it was lovely. It was lovely to talk to you. And uh, yeah, I hope very much when this is all over, we'll we'll um, we'll 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 be able to make it over to to, to Scotland and to yourselves will be in Irish and in, in Ireland. I'm sure. Yeah, say hello. Is <laughs> ever in this part of the world? Hopefully, not too much longer. Exactly. Thanks ever so much. Thanks, Thanks very much. Bye. Bye.